Welcome to Healthcare Data Analytics, Risk Adjustment and Predictive Modeling. This is Lecture B. The component, Healthcare Data Analytics, covers the topic of healthcare data analytics, which applies the use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis, and explanatory and predictive models to drive decisions and actions in healthcare. The objectives for this unit, risk adjustment and predictive modeling, are to define risk adjustment, predictive modeling, and validations of models in healthcare. Identify the healthcare and other data needed to perform risk adjustment and predictive modeling. Relate risk adjustment and population segmentation to allocation of healthcare resources and healthcare redesign. Discuss uses of risk adjustment and modeling in value based models of care. Delineate the use of health information technology in the creation, delivery, and evaluation of prediction models. And describe ethical considerations in risk adjustment in population management. Risk adjustment has a strong connection to the notion of value based care. To see why, we first need to understand a little about value based care. Value based care is defined as providing care where the benefits or quality exceed the costs and is therefore a good value. This is the fundamental concept of value based care. It's sometimes considered a shift from service based care or fee for service care. Because value is not measured only at the service level where billing is easily established, it's typically paired with an alternative payment model. A version of this is the idea of capitation, paying a fixed amount per capita or per person, per month or year. Another version is episode based payments. In these arrangements, providers are paid a fixed amount per episode. For example, an episode may exist from the beginning stages of a knee replacement through recovery. For Medicare patients, hospitals are paid a fixed amount for all care related to the diagnosis related group, or DRG, of the admission. This is similar to episode based payment, but is limited to only the hospital costs of the current stay. A critical issue with these payment methods is whether the fixed amount is accurate given the risk of the patients. Risk adjustment can be used to modify the fixed amount and therefore facilitates value based care. What might providers do if risk adjustment was not used? Providers may try to avoid sicker patients because they would be more costly to treat for the same fixed payment amount. The Affordable Care Act, or ACA, involves risk adjustment. Risk adjustment is used so plans in the health insurance exchanges that enroll more sick members will receive payments from those with more healthy members. For this application, risk is measured using Hierarchical Clinical Classifications, or HCC, mentioned in Lecture A, that are based on diagnosis codes, age, and sex. Another application of risk adjustment to value based care concerns the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS's, value based payment modifier. This program provides a differential payment to a physician or groups of physicians under the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule. It applies only to Medicare patients and primary care providers and is phased in by the physician group size. Using the HCC model, it risk adjusts the per capita cost. Then quality measures are calculated and the combination of cost and quality is used to assign which value modifier applies to the fee schedule for that physician or group of physicians. The excerpted Table 4 from the CMS description of the program shows that a low cost, high quality group could receive a 2% increase for each service performed while a high-cost, low-quality group could have payment reduced by 1%. Predictive modeling has distinct applications to the notion of tailored care. Tailored care is providing different types of care based on individual or group factors. For example, not all patients with congestive heart failure, or CHF, have a similar risk of readmission after an inpatient stay. This type of application is sometimes called precision delivery. Using predictive models, we could find the patients or group of patients that respond positively and not give the treatment to others. 
there are many other applications of predictive modeling, since each outcome and set of patients may have different results. In a review of predictive modeling for patients with heart failure, Rahimi and colleagues provide some perspective on how well the models work. The paper looked at 48 published studies using 64 different models of risk. The outcomes of the studies were either death, hospitalization, or the combination of death or hospitalization. The 43 models of death had C statistics, discussed in Lecture A, of between 0.60 and 0.89. The 10 models of hospitalization had slightly lower C statistics, of 0.60 to 0.82. The 11 studies where models predicted death or hospitalization had C statistics between 0.61 and 0.80. The most common predictor variables included age, sex, renal function, cardiovascular disease, and heart rate. There are several distinct settings for predictive modeling. At a clinic, Clinicians may want to identify patients at risk for various negative health events for preventative purposes. At a hospital unit, there may be interest in identifying patients at risk for readmission who have congestive heart failure to provide additional resources for recovery. At an insurer, it may be important to identify patients with spending to see if care coordination could stabilize their care across multiple clinicians. There are a couple distinct limitations to predictive modeling. The first is mean reversion. Because predictive modeling is frequently aimed at reducing the cost of high-cost patients, there exists a common problem whereby patients who are identified as being high-cost will tend to have lower cost in the subsequent period. This behavior, referred to as mean reversion, can give the false impression that an intervention applied to these patients has reduced costs when in fact, some reduction may have occurred regardless of any intervention. A drawback of risk adjustment is that it can lead to upcoding. Because more severe diagnoses can increase risk score and improve payment, through risk adjustment, there is an incentive to give patients similar but more severe diagnoses or codes. This concludes Lecture B of Risk Adjustment and Predictive Modeling. In summary, we discuss the use of risk adjustment and predictive modeling in healthcare, including value-based care programs. An example of adjusting Medicare payments based on the complexity of patients and outcomes achieved versus costs of care is given. Value-based care programs attempt to maximize the benefit, health outcomes, versus the cost of care. And examples of how to tailor care based on predictive models are given in addition to a discussion of the limitations of predictive models.